We want to hear from you uh, and, and what the Lord is saying to you. And uh, the, the, the spirit of the Lord is free to move uh, in our midst tonight. And, uh, and so we, we give the Lord praise uh, for putting us all together in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is Passionate Love. It's real important uh, for us to be passionately in love with Jesus Christ and longing uh, for his return. And, and it really is going to make the difference whether or not we endure to the end or whether we give up. And uh, uh, so many of our friends mm -hmm. uh, have given up over the years. We've seen many people. Uh, they just didn't understand what, what was expected of them. And, and I believe it's important for all of us to know uh, an, an expectation of, of what's ahead. Uh, last week, or last time we met, I started with uh, a love a story. Uh, it was your story, and it was written by God. And before you ever uh, existed, uh, you were in his heart, and he had a, written a story about you. And it, it included all of the days that he had ordained about your life, that he had ordained for you to live uh, on this uh, planet. And so God uh, foreknew you and he predestined you and uh, for a great a great future and a great life on the earth. And, and uh, what we see is that his, uh, what he wrote in his book about you was his plan for you. Mm -hmm. It was uh, to do his will, what would be his will. And uh, if there were ever any hiccups or any things that uh, caused you to fall off of your storyline, any evil that came against you during your lifetime, well, Jesus came uh, to preach the gospel to us so that we would know, so that our spiritual eyes would be open, that we would know our storyline and we'd go back to our storyline and, and he'd heal our hearts. So anything that's happened in your past, he wants to heal your heart. And he has, the plan that God has for you is a favorable year, every year of your life. Mm, it's favorable. Every year. It, it's what God calls a favorable year. year. And uh, if anytime there's a hiccup or if there's a harm or evil, then uh, what we need to do is just ask Jesus to go back and redeem that time. So that was just a summary and a highlight of the message from two weeks ago. And that was pretty much looking backwards uh, to the things that may have hurt us. And so we had that option of redeeming the time by uh, asking for forgiveness for anything that we did uh, that we shouldn't have done that was sin, but also to ask for uh, healing, anything that had harmed us. But tonight's a different message. It's still looking at that storyline, but we're going to propel it and it and uh, go into the future. And so why not only are we going to look at your future, but we're going to look at the final chapter of your book. Mm -hmm. So there's a book mm -hmm. written about you, a story written about you. And uh, uh, it's a glorious uh, future. Mm -hmm. It's a glorious uh, ending to your story. And we want to, uh, we all want to know what our ending is. And it's a glorious uh, story and that's that's what we're going to be looking at tonight is your future and remember every year favorable year and if it's not a favorable year oh well ask Jesus to make it that way mm, amen. You know? because amen. he comes to restore all, all things. things and he can do it anything too hard for God no amen all things are possible with God mm -hmm. all things are possible to those who believe, believe. Amen. you have a glorious future that's what I want you to uh, to know uh, uh, from this message tonight, you have a glorious future. But what we've seen uh, on a day-to-day -day operation is that we see many of our loved ones and family members who uh, lie down and give up somewhere before they reach the end of their story. And it's a sad, sad situation. And well, what I want you to know that God has written a romance about you and a romance uh, is a, not about a place. And, and so many people think, well, I'm just going to give up here on the earth because I've lived a long life. Things have gotten difficult. And so I'm just going to go on to heaven. But heaven is not the goal. 
Did you know mm -hmm. heaven is not, not the, the goal, goal of your romantic story? And, and to give you an example of it, uh, I met Sherry uh, years ago, and uh, I liked her, and I wanted to date her. So my romantic story is about Sherry, and it's mm. not about a place. It's about a person. So I dated her, and uh, after about a year, we I proposed marriage to her. I uh, as we were engaged, and we were engaged for uh, about a year, and and then we married. So the object or the goal of my romantic story was a person. And you're looking at her. She's sitting here beside me. And this past uh, Monday, we've had uh, 58 uh, years, years together of marriage together. And it's been wonderful. And so if you look also, if you, you look at the two years we were dating, then really we've been together 60 years. Uh, 60 years. And uh, it's a glorious. Uh, but... After we married, after a few years, we wound up moving to Georgia, and we've lived here for 50 years, but the goal of my romantic story was not a place, was not Georgia, and the goal of your romantic story is not heaven. Mm, the mm. goal and the object of your romantic story is a person called Jesus Christ, Woo, Hallelujah! and it's about his coming back. Mm. that's the how your story ends is that he comes back you go to the marriage feast, feast. and you have intimacy with Ooh, Jesus hallelujah. that's the end of the romance and so many many people get their eye off of the goal and they think well i, I just want to go on to heaven uh but I, one of the things we found out is that you are not your own you have been bought with a price right. amen and you can't make the decision uh, and just bail out of this life without consequences. Mm, and you mm, do mm. not belong to yourself because Jesus bought you with yes, a great a price. price. He gave his life, life his for blood. you. Amen. All his blood for you. He purchased you. It's really not your decision uh, of what, how your story ends. He, your story is already written. written. And it ends with Jesus Christ and consummation of that relationship. It's an exciting story. God has written an exciting story about you. So this is just the, uh, the beginning of the story. So you understand where you're headed. And your goal is not heaven, mm -hmm. but your goal is the coming of Jesus Christ. Christ amen. And that, you amen. Will, that you're longing for him. Now, I want to start by asking Sherry to read some chap uh, some verses uh, to us. We'll start with Timothy. Uh, this is the, the last book that uh, Paul wrote, as I understand it, the second Timothy. And so this is about the end of his life. He's waiting, really, uh, either for trial or he's already had trial and he's going to be executed soon. He's going to appear uh, in his trial before the emperor Nero. <clears throat> Nero is one of the most wicked rulers of all time. Mm -hmm. So definitely Paul's going to, his end, life's going to end with his, probably his head chopped off or something, uh, because Nero is not a merciful ruler. And, uh, but he writes this statement, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read it, because this is the core of the message today. Second Timothy 4, verses 7 through 9. <clears throat> I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Okay, and the NIV says it, they have longed for his appearing. So what we're talking about today is loving Jesus Christ mm. passionately and longing for his appearing. That, that's the end of your story, longing. So we long for that day for our story uh, to be ended in a glorious ending when he returns and we are intimate with him, in union with him 
uh, united with him. That's the way your story ends. Mm -hmm. And to abort that, uh, then you're taking things into your own hand, things that he has laid out for you. He's saying, here it is. Uh, I'm coming back for you for a glorious church. And what Paul writes here is, I fought a good fight. Now, what's interesting, it's not about winning every fight. It's about fighting the fight. Mm -hmm. It's not about winning or losing. It's about fighting. And, and so many times people don't fight. That's what we, Sherry and I have found. We've mm -hmm. lost so many loved ones uh, that when the time got tough, uh, they didn't fight. They just said, well, it's, I've had a good life. I, I'm going to go on to heaven. And so they make that, they decide to do that. They put things in their own hand. But what really Jesus said, I own you, I purchased you. Those kinds of decisions are in his hand. If you take them out of his hand, you're not going to get the best. Uh, you're not going to get the best result. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and what's interesting uh, mm -hmm. from Philippians mm -hmm. uh, chapter 1, verses 23 and 24, he said, Paul wrote, uh, well, it's better for me Maybe if I go on. If I go on. But it's better for you if I stay. Woo! Okay, Glory! So, so if I make a decision to go on, heaven, if I make a decision, that's selfishness because it's better for mm -hmm. you if I stay. <clears throat> Now, Hallelujah. Now, I can make that statement very uh, confidently that it's if a person decides to go on to heaven, it's better for them. But that's selfishness. Yes. But it's better for us if they stay. And uh, first of all, I lost, uh, when I was 12, I lost a 17-year-old brother who committed suicide. And that devastated the family. Uh, so that might have been mm. better for him, but it wasn't better for the family. And then uh, when I was 27, my mother committed suicide. Uh, she went on to heaven. Uh, she was a good Christian. Yeah, she was uh, wonderful. The first memory I ever had uh, as a child, uh, my, my mother carried me to uh, a church service one morning on Sunday morning and took me to the nursery and just left me there for a week. That was my, <laughs> that was, that was my perspective, a little bitty, a little bitty child. And my mother, first time I'd ever ever I've uh, been away from my mother, and she just left me there. It's like she's never coming back. Uh, that was my first first memory. So she loved church. She yes, loved going to church, and and from a, the beginning, she always took her children to uh, to church. So she was a good Christian. But uh, when things got tough, yeah, one of the things that uh, was really weighed heavily on her, she lost her son. Uh, who had uh, was really a kindred spirit with her and uh, he had taken his life and then a few years later she took her own life in the same manner he did uh, but those both of those decisions uh, and I love my brother and I love my mother and I, I still do but uh, those were selfish decisions they made and, and they were not best uh, for example my hmm. daughter Amy Elizabeth uh, who's now in her 40s oh, I better not say that <laughs> But she's grown. But she never saw her grandmother. My, my mother was a wonderful person, but my daughter, Amy Elizabeth. Yes, never never saw her. Never saw her because she was uh, dead a long time before my daughter was born. Uh, and so uh, what I want you to see, we need to fight the fight. And, and it, this is an important message. It's really an important message. And I hope I get this over to you. And the way for us to... to continue to finish our course. See, we need to be like Paul. Paul finished his course. He fought a good fight. Mm. He finished his course. He kept the faith. He kept the faith. Now, what motivated him to do that? Well, it says in the next verse that uh, he had a crown of righteousness laid up for him that Jesus was going to present for him on that day. And he was longing uh, that he was longing for that day. And it, not only was Paul going to get that crown, but you and I can get it Hallelujah. if we are simply longing for the Lord Jesus Christ, for his coming and his appearing. Mm -hmm. This is a really important message, and I hope yeah, you catch you, hold Jesus. of it. Amen. Really important that we don't have the right to give up on this earth without a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Whether you win or lose is not important. What is important 
is that you fight the good fight of faith. Amen. And glory to God, because the righteous see can fall seven times and will rise again. Mm. So if you fall, if if uh, you get knocked down, the mm. issue is not that you got knocked down, but that you rise. And that you, you gonna, rise again. Are you going to rise again? Now, in baseball, you only get three strikes and you're out. But in, well, the righteous person gets seven. They can fall. He or she can fall seven times and they will rise again. Hallelujah. That's for, you're not out of the game. Amen. As long amen. As you keep rising and fighting. Mm. So this is not mm. about winning every battle. This is about fighting. And you know, uh, years ago, Sherry and I were in uh, Cuba and uh, they sent us out to a barn. Uh, and, and we'd just gone uh, to a house, and I guess we were probably going to have a meal there or something, and and uh, they wanted us to go pray for an old grandpa. We went out to a barn. They just put him in a barn. They put him on a cot, uh, and he really was just scantily dressed, if any anything at all. I don't want to go into a lot of detail on that, yeah. but they just <laughs> left him out there to die. It was sweltering hot. Yes. And uh, Sherry and I went out there and prayed for him. No, none of the family members went out there. They, they didn't care. They had already given him up for dead. Yes. And uh, we went out there and prayed. And then we came back in and we heard uh, that in a uh, an hour or two later, he was dead. Now, mm. the issue is, did I care uh, about praying for him i wanted to pray for him am i glad i prayed for him i'm glad yes, i prayed for yes him. Amen. you know how i prayed i prayed that he'd be healed that he'd, he'd be raised, raised up. Up. Oh, okay so did my prayer get answered uh, the way i hoped it would no it didn't in an hour or two he was dead but i had rather fight than to let somebody lay there and die without praying for them i had rather pray and so if you have a neighbor uh, that's sick and you might you might say well I don't know whether they believe or not and uh, so I don't know whether I'm supposed to pray or not well let, let me tell you it's better to fight uh, than, than to leave things undone amen this message is about fighting Sherry and I are fighters we yeah. learned this a long time ago when when our baby daughter was born and the doctors told us well, that she was going to die. die we prayed and God healed her and gave her a miracle gave her a miracle and uh, uh, restored her body and we have been fighting ever since. And if anybody tells us God doesn't heal, we're at, away from there. We've left those people. Mm -hmm, we're going to leave mm -hmm, those people mm -hmm. in the dust because mm -hmm. we have believed that God heals and that he heals well, every we, time. We know he does. I we mean. know that God heals. And, and when Sherry faced death, we fought. We fought for her life and she's alive today. They, they said she'd be dead July of 1993 well you can look at her now yeah she's not she's not dead she's still alive i'm Why? still alive because we're fighters amen and, and we fought for a lot of people and, and we'll continue to fight and whether they live or die doesn't matter we are fighting for them whether they are raised up or mm -hmm. not is not the issue we are going to fight for people and fight for their life and fight for the rights that they have uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are fighters. Amen. And what I want to uh, encourage you to be a fighter. Don't be somebody who aborts your mission. So you've got a mission uh, on the earth. God gave you assignments down here. Yes, he amen. Your assignments. And, well, Ruth is on assignment right now. And, and, and we need to be, amen. we need to be fighting for one another it's yes not, it's not about just me it's about one another we need to be fighting for one another and we're going to read some verses here in a few moments that will astonish you we need to be fighting uh for one another and and, and it to finish your romance mm -hmm. remember there's a final chapter and most people yeah, never get, get there, there. And, and i'm going to ask you to read uh Matthew 24, a couple of verses in, in that. And this is really talking about Jesus' return. And, and let's see what it says in these two verses. And because lawliness is lawless, lawlessness is increased, most people's love will become cold. But the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved. Okay, now if I ask all of you, 
Uh, is your love hot or cold for Jesus Christ? I'm sure everyone would say hot. Uh, and you're here, and that's a that's a demonstration. And yes, amen, that amen. Tonight. It's a big holiday in the United States, but but you're here uh, at this at this time together as we gather together and talk about Jesus Christ. Uh, but it says it didn't just say a few people love. It said mm, most, most people's, people's love, love will now become the, old. Now the thing about people, if they're if they're caught, if they're Love for Jesus is not hot. Jesus is going to just vomit them out of his mouth. That's a terrible yeah. thing to think about. Revelation 3.16, uh, Jesus said, uh, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to uh, spew you spew, out of my mouth. Spew you out of my mouth. Now, and I, I like my coffee hot, and Sister Becky likes her, her coffee hot. You know, when we need, when we're eating hot, we want hot. Hallelujah. Don't give me lukewarm. Praise the Lord. And the Amplified Bible on that verse, uh, Revelation 3.16, makes it very interesting. It says, if you're lukewarm, uh, and what the Amplified says, if you're spiritually useless. Woo! Oh, goodness. <laughs> Did that get your attention? Oh, goodness. Spiritually useless. Oh, help us, Lord. Jesus help us, Lord. Spit you out of his mouth. Mm. Now, what I want you to see and get out of this message tonight is we need to be have passionate, passionate love. Love. Hot love. love. Love needs to be hot for Jesus Christ. And although we will all say our love is hot, we're going to give you a little test today, see whether or not your love is hot and how to keep your temperature hot on your love. And there's really three points I want to make. And these are verses that I'll ask Sherry to read. But uh, the, let, me, let me just go ahead and and give you the three points so that you can remember them, and then we'll give scriptural basis for it. But uh, it talks about those who are longing for his appearing will be live a holy and godly life. That's number one, holy and godly life. Number two is you will do righteous deeds. Mm, the deeds that the Lord has already ordained for you to do. See, if you are passionately in love with Jesus Christ and you are passionately longing for his return you will do what he tells you to do and number three you'll have a vibrant prayer life so you will live a holy and godly life you'll do what he assigns you to do mm -hmm. righteous deeds and you'll have a vibrant prayer life now I want to give some biblical uh, background and, and support for those three points. I'll ask you to read. This is in Second Peter chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, talking about all of the material things. With, well, with his return. With his return. What sort of people are you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Verse 12 looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. Oh, hallelujah. You see, when he returns, there's going to be some changes going on. Right. People are going to be upset. They're going to be fearful. But don't you, not you and me, we're looking for his return. return. We're hallelujah. longing for his return. And uh, because of that, we're going to live a holy and godly life. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's this other verse in 12 that she just read. It has an interesting phrase in there. And the phrase is hastening his return. Ooh. What does that mean? We can speed it up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. You can speed up his return. Oh, dear Jesus. I mm. can speed up his return. So if we are passionately longing for his return, then we will speed up his return. Oh, oh he's wanting. Hallelujah. Oh, he's up there. He's chomping at the bit. He's wanting to come and catch us home. And he want, he's looking for that marriage feast himself. Yes, he he's, is. He's excited Amen. about Amen. it. And he's, he's wanting us to speed it up Hallelujah. Well, we've been we've been just uh messing around we haven't been out there seriously uh passionately longing for his return mm -hmm. when you get serious like paul was serious he said i have 
fought a good fight. Yes. I finished my, my course. course. I have kept, kept the, the faith. faith. And it, if we are longing for his return, we're going to get that same laurel wreath that he get, that he uh, received. It, it talked about a crown of righteousness, but it's not the crown of a king. It's about a, a crown uh, like a laurel wreath of someone who competes in the Olympic Games. Today, we would call it a gold medal. See, when he appears, he'll give you the gold medal because you've competed, because you fought a good fight, you finished, finished the course. The, yes, I know. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have any room there for you to change the course mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and say, oh, I, I'm, I'm ready to just lie down and, and uh, go on uh, to heaven. Because remember, we're in a romantic story and the end of our romantic story is a person it's not a place mm, called mm, heaven. Mm, mm. Hallelujah. 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 So the first thing, we need to live a holy and godly life, and then we'll speed up his return. We have mm, something to do too. with when he returns. Oh, dear Jesus. Mm. Are we longing, passionately longing mm. for his return? First one, live a holy and godly life. Here's number two, and this is from Revelation. I'm going to ask Sherry to read these verses. This is Revelation 19, verses 7 and 8. Let's rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him because the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has prepared herself. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. But, listen, listen to this next part. Who is responsible for clothing you with fine linen. Mm, you you are. are. And how do you get the thread to, to make, make your the, garment? Make your garment. You do righteous deeds. See, every time you do a righteous deed, not just something that somebody asks you to do, but something that God assigns you to do, that He has assigned ordained you, that, you to ordained do. Ordained there in uh, Ephesians 2, verse 10. You are His workmanship, and there are works that He has prepared for you. And, and you need to find out by the Holy Spirit what those things are to do. That's where you have a purpose. You're, you have a purpose here on this earth and you have a destiny and your story and destiny is for you. Uh, the ending chapter is for you to be with Jesus Christ with, at his appearing. Mm. That's a glory. Hallelujah. 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 And, and so every time you do these righteous deeds that God has ordained for you to do, then they, they give you a thread for your garment. And then, then you begin to weave that garment. And you, and you don't want to go to the wedding feast uh, with a, something like a hospital gown on so that you're <laughs> clothed in the front, but you're uh, rear end. Is, <laughs> naked in the back. Naked in the back, and you're not covering uh, the behind. And so we need, <laughs> we need to be fully clothed. Ooh, uh, and, glory. Uh, I know of a woman who's who uh, was older and she had lived a good life and she loved the Lord and she was ready to go on to the Lord, uh, go on to heaven, be, uh, go to heaven. She just said, oh, I want to go to heaven. But, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to her and he said, but your garment's not finished. Ooh, you know, you hallelujah. Your finished yet. No, no sleeves in your, in your dress. Oh, wouldn't that be something? Hallelujah. If you, if you go to the marriage feast and your garment's not finished. And you've just got a little cloth. And you're trying to uh, hide things behind your cloth. You know that the, there were people that came to the marriage feast <laughs> that were thrown out because they didn't have. Yes, the, they didn't have the wedding garment. They on. didn't have the wedding garment. Well, none of us want to go to heaven and, and without our wedding garment. You need the wedding garment to go to the feast, to the marriage feast. A, and have you finished it? Well, the only way you'll know is if you. Hear from the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if he calls you on and he said, oh, your garment's finished. It's a glorious garment. It's a radiant garment and it, it's fully finished and it's all uh, in perfect shape and, and, and come on and well done. They're good and faithful, faithful servant. servant. Don't, don't you want him to say that to you? You don't want him to say, oh, where's your wedding garment when you get up there? No, no. <laughs> We need to be prepared Amen. and Amen. it's going to take righteous deeds and it's not just one. And, and see, the reason for this message is that you might think, well, it's way out there. I've got years and years on the earth. 
But yeah. these three things start today. Yeah. They start today. Living a, a holy, holy and godly, godly life. life. Number two, doing righteous deeds, the deeds that God has ordained for you. You can't wait until the end and say, oh, wait a minute, I haven't done any deeds or I haven't done enough deeds. I don't have my garment, my wedding garment. You, we need our wedding garment on. This is an important message. And, and this is not something that you're going to uh, achieve at the end. This is a day-by-day -day process. This is a fight. You've got to fight the fight. Uh, and, and again, it's not about winning. It's about fighting. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose. You get seven tries. If you fall down oh, seven yeah, times, times, the righteous will, will rise. rise again. Now, it doesn't say anything about, about more than that. So I know that by the time you get to seven times, you've risen up again, that you're going to be victorious. So that, Hallelujah. that must be enough because that's all it says. The righteous will fall seven times and rise again to continue the fight. Isn't that uh, isn't that wonderful? Thank okay, you. so we've covered two points with the scriptures here that we're to live a godly and holy life and to speed up his return. Turn, I mean, and then we're to create our wedding garment. Oh, I know some of Hallelujah, them hallelujah. Glorious garments. But are they finished? Mm, That's the issue. Mm, mm. Are they finished? If they're not finished, we need to keep on. Uh, keep it on. Yes. Because, why? Because we're longing passionately longing for his return. Hallelujah. Here, here's the third one. Let me just put the third one into context. You know, Jesus uh, talked about his return and it's recorded three different times in, in Mark, Matthew and Mark and in Luke. Uh, it's in the passage 21st chapter. Of Luke. Of Luke. And, and first of all, it says, it's talking about his return in verses 25 through 28. And it says the world's going to be fearful when, when you see all of these signs coming on the world on the earth. You're going to be mm -hmm. you're going to be seeing signs in the sun and the moon. You're going to be seeing these signs and the, and the world's going to be fearful. But he's saying to you Christians, yes, to us, uh, to he's us. saying yes, lift up your head because Amen. this is a glorious time. For Hallelujah! You and me. It's a it's a fearful time for the world, but it's a glorious time. Glorious time, time for us. For Amen. us. Hallelujah! Woo! So we lift up our we lift up our heads uh, and welcome yeah, him yeah, because yeah. we are longing, longing, passionately, passionately longing, longing for, for him. his return. Amen. And then I'm going to ask Sherry to drop down and, and read a few verses later in Luke 21, but it's talking about his return. That's the context of it. And now I'll read these verses, Sherry. Okay. And it's verses 34 through 36. But be on your guard so that your hearts will not be weighed down with overindulgence and drunkenness and the worries of this life. Oh, and the, no, no, don't worry. He's saying, don't worry. Yeah, don't yeah. worry. Oh, hallelujah. That's pretty, pretty important. And it's pretty, he listed it right there. Just three things. Don't overindulge. Don't uh, get, be drunk. Mm. And, and don't worry. <laughs> mm, hallelujah yeah. now i know those first two probably don't apply to anybody but <laughs> do we ever work do we ever work oh dear he jesus he said don't worry because why because he's returning when we're longing for his return okay sure and that this day will not come on you suddenly like a trap for it will come upon all those who live on the face of all of the earth but stay alert at all times praying that you will have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, we need to have a vibrant prayer life so that we can stand before Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. Yeah, I've just laid hallelujah. out three simple things here that we need to be doing, but we need to be doing them from this Stay day forward. forward. Amen. Hallelujah. First of all, live a holy and godly life because we're longing for him. We're passionately in love with him. And secondly, that we're doing righteous deeds because we're longing for him and passionately in love with and him. And we want to fulfill his will and for what thirdly, he asked for us to do. Maintain a vibrant prayer life. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I, I just want to just highlight what I've said here, that this is an important message. We know so many people that don't realize what the end of their story is, then they're just willing to give up whenever time, times get, get tough. tough. And, and I know 
the battles are are out there. I mean, we live in an evil day. Uh, the battles are out there, and so th evil's going to come your way. And and so, if you never fight the little battles, you'll not be ready when the big one comes. Yeah, when the big one comes, we, we, we practice. Amen. Fighting. We Amen. practice fighting. Well, we we become skillful in warfare. We practice, and then we become skillful, and when the big battles come, we're ready. And it's not just about ourselves. It's about the people around us. We right. need to be it's... fighting battles I mean, for, I mean. with other people. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about fighting them for them. I'm talking about fighting with them. There's a lot of people who, who are fighting, and we need to recognize mm -hmm. that and come alongside them and fight with them. And it's all about fighting. Fight the good fight of faith. Finish the course and stay in faith. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank you Hallelujah. for being here. It's a big holiday, but you've taken an effort to be here. And I want to personally say thank you. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, I just had a, a, a comment from Michelle Cannon. You know, and she said that this was a confirmation, a confirmation to her. And, and I believe when we began to, to study for this, uh, this message that, that Brother Fred and, and my heart were, uh, he just set us more on fire for him and that we wanted to do more for him. We wanted to fulfill uh, his plan for us. We wanted to, to be at that wedding feast fully uh, clothed uh, with our garment. And, uh, and so, you know, this is this is what we're encouraging each one of you to do as leaders. Uh, you take the lead. You take the lead in your family. You take the lead uh, in with your uh, your groups that you belong with. That you know, there's. I look at uh, the people on this uh, Zoom meeting tonight, and many of you uh, are survivors. You have been. Uh, you have survived many things. Uh, that the enemy has tried to uh, come at you in many different ways, but you have you have gotten up and you have continued to fight. And this is this is so important uh, so that we can endure to the end and finish our love story uh, with the Lord. You know, and if, when you're passionately in love with someone, you want to be with them. You want to hear their voice. You want to uh, to speak to them. You want them to you want to feel uh, their touch and their and be in their presence. And and that's what it's all about: uh, being passionate, uh, in love, hot, having hot love for the Lord. And uh, it is a um, a time to to pray. It is really a time to pray. Uh, the Lord has been speaking to me about several different things, but one is that we are his house of prayer. And it says in, in 1 Thessalonians, pray without ceasing. You know, pray, 